This is John King. I'm speaking with Dave Galt from the Montana Petroleum Association. Uh, the reason I called you up is I saw a pretty surprising uh, tweet <laughs> on the Twitter sphere last week, and it, it said a new milestone, zero drill rigs working in Montana. Uh, it was something I thought was pretty surprising. I was hoping maybe you could kind of tell us what's going on here, what led to this, and what this means for the future of uh, drilling in Montana. Well, you know, the number of drill rigs, when, when we use those um, types of statistics, are usually talking about large rigs that, that, that are used in the Bakken and the areas where you have horizontal drilling and hydraulic fracturing, and they're kind of an indicator of what kind of activity is going on in a state or an area as far as oil and gas development and new wealth. So Montana's been, you know, in the past four years or so, we've been inching up with our oil production in Montana, and we've been running about 12 to 13 rigs, pretty stable, for the last three or four years. And as the price declined in late 2014, and, um, you know, we've seen less and less oil activity in, across the country, not just in Montana, but um, I, was, I was pointing out the fact that um, new well drilling in Montana is uh, stopped right now, really, with zero rigs drilling, zero rigs drill, zero new wells. And without new wells, your production levels start to decline. So not only will Montana uh, as a state and local governments and schools um, see less revenue because the price is declining, they're also going to see less revenue because uh, we're going to start to see those production declines in the out months of 2015. Now, when we say zero rigs, uh, are you saying there's zero new rigs, or those 12 to 13 that you had mentioned as a sort of constant, those are down as well? They're done. There's not, they're not drilling. You know, several oil service companies monitor the big rigs that are active in a, any given basins. Um, North Dakota, you know, if you were looking in July, North Dakota was running about 185, 190 in that, in that range right now. Um, Montana, like I said, 12, 13, 12, 2, 13. Uh, North Dakota's down by more than half. They're below 90 active working rigs right at the moment. And Montana, like I said, is zero. So those are the large rigs drilling new holes. It's not new rigs. Um, when a new rig is added, then the number goes from 13 to 14. But I'm just pointing out that there are, there are no big rigs working in Montana right at the moment. And when, you when, know, if you look around the country, you're going to see that all over the place. When did, that, when did we hit that milestone? That day I posted it, I just received a note from um, somebody that's monitoring the active. We were down to two, and he said, well, they're, they're, both, they're both laid down now. So I just put that out there. So that would have been... Milestone might not be such a great word, but it, it tw- certainly is poignant. Well, maybe a, a white cross on the mile. Uh, so that would be yeah. uh, 23, I think, the 23rd, last Thursday is the day that I uh, think I saw yeah. that. Yeah, that's when I first learned about it, so it might have been in that neighborhood. But, but this month, you, know, we've, you would say. We've, we've suddenly sure. seen rigs, um, you know, slow down or move or stop or lay down, whatever you, term you want to use. We've seen that going on now since probably 1st of November. Wow, that's really shocking. Now, when it comes to the, uh, the, the rigs lying down, what does that mean? Uh, I don't know, maybe this is getting too far into the weeds, but what does that mean economically for Montana? A new well would support an additional $665,000 in new wages for drilling and extraction workers. Um, so this is just wage. Right. You're right. not counting other economic, okay. But I'm getting there. Um, overall, an ad- one additional productive well increases Montana's gross output by $9 million and adds $3.6 million to Montana's gross domestic product produces an additional 1.5 million in wages while supporting an additional 33 jobs. Whoa. Now, does, the, does, that that does that work backwards? Does that work backwards? So if you're saying one additional well from 13, does that work backwards like each one down the line is also equivalent to about that? Well, so, yeah. So, you know, that's, that's kind of the gross impact. I mean, that would include direct and indirect jobs. You know, the, the folks that drive the trucks that bring the products to the well, the casing, the sand, the water, the material to, to put up an oil rig. So these big rigs that are working in northeast Montana, western North Dakota, they, they, 
probably drill nine to ten wells per year. So if you had 10, 13 rigs running, we were probably seeing 200 to 300 wells drilled, and you multiply each well by that number gives you an idea of the impact of the economy of the state. Wow. Could you repeat those uh, numbers for me again? So I'll just read this section. If So overall, this additional productive well increases Montana's gross output by $9 million, adds $3.6 million to Montana's GDP, gross domestic product, and produces an additional $1.5 million in wages while supporting 33 additional jobs. And I'd be happy to to email you this article if you'd like to. It looks at the whole industry, and I'm just taking one little paragraph. No, that's great. Can you give me the uh, source for it, at least? Just the, on source the-, is, the source is the Treasure State Journal, which is produced by us every two years. The article is written by Dr. Scott Ricard of the Center for Applied Economic Research out of MSU Billings. Wow, that's that's pretty uh, pretty impressive amount of... Uh- Economics does kind of uh, lying down, if you will, with the uh, the rigs run, run, lying down. So, real quick, just so my understanding, I live in Western Montana. When it comes to uh, these drill rigs that are drilling these wells, the wells are still producing, right? Yeah, once a well's drilled, it's still producing. It doesn't shut off. But when you look at the total well production aggregate in a state or in a basin or in an area, you know. Wells, when you drill them, they naturally decline. I mean, their production is starts high and it and it declines out at different rates depending on geology and and right. how they're completed. So if you stop drilling wells, I mean, the basin or the area will production will drop. And if you're looking at what's going on in the country right now, um, we're just starting to see oil production in the United States start to taper off, um, primarily because of price impact. No, so um, with the uh, when what, how long do you have to look back to when we had twelve or thirteen rigs running? July. <laughs> Seriously, just a year ago. Just nine months ago. Wow. So the um, was it the decision out of OPEC that really sh- shut this down? You know, there's there's thoughts about that. I I think that there was um, you know there was suggestions and there is articles. I'm not a I'm not a global oil price guy, you know, but uh, there were some decisions by Saudi Arabian members of uh, the OPEC countries to continue producing oil. I think that when you look at what the United States has done in the last five years, we've had a renaissance in oil and gas production, and we're uh, uh, we're the world's largest producer of oil right now. So I think people paid attention to that, and I think that says something about really what we call the shale revolution in the oil and gas industry, both oil and natural gas. We've increased that dramatically um, through enhanced and advanced drilling technology and, uh, and hydraulic fracturing. 